This conference will now be recorded. Thank you for joining the City of Kingston's Common Council at a special finance and audit meeting. Today is Monday, May 4th. My name is Andrea Schott, the Council President and Organizer for our virtual meetings. Before we begin our meeting, we would like to go over a few meeting guidelines to help us navigate the system as efficiently and respectfully as possible. We ask that members of the public and press remain muted and off camera for the length of the meeting. As an organizer, I've reserved the right to mute anyone who unmutes themselves. Council members and city staff will control their own mute button. Good practice would be to mute yourself if you are not speaking to avoid background noise and feedback. If a council member or staff wishes to speak, they will raise their hands. The chairperson will call on them before they speak by stating their name clearly for our audio listeners. All of our meetings are recorded. Both video and written transcriptions will be made available to the public on the city's website the next day. Although we will not have public speaking tonight, you can submit written comments to the City of Kingston Clerk, Elisa Tinty at emtinty at kingston-ny.gov or by dropping them off at the drop box located outside the side door of City Hall. We also encourage you to reach out to committee chairs or your wards representative at any time. If you have any audio issues, send a text message to the following number, 845-594-6120. I'll repeat this number again, but be aware that phone calls will not be answered during the meeting. The number to text is 845-594-6120. As the organizer for today's meeting, I reserve the right to lock and pause the meeting to eject anyone who has behaved inappropriately. Lastly, at tonight's meeting, we have in attendance Chairman Doug Coop, committee members, Alderman Steve Shabbat, Alderman Tony Davis, Alderman Rennie Scott Childress, and Alderwoman Michelle Hirsch. Non-voting council members, we have Alderman Jeffrey Ventura Morrell, Alderman Don Tollerman. City staff, we have engineer John Schulteis and Mayor Steve Noble. Thank you for your patience during these difficult times. And on behalf of the Common Council, I wish you and your family good health. And I now turn the floor over to Chairman Coop. Good evening, this is Doug Coop, Chairman of the Finance and Audit Committee. The objective of tonight's meeting is to discuss and consider a change order for the ongoing demolition and restoration contract at 4345 North Front Street. This is an ongoing contract for $165,000. Now, let me, let me just review where there are because there's special, there, there's several callers on here may not know all these details, so let me try and frame the discussion. The demolition work was essentially completed last week on the property at 4345 North Front Street. Upon completion, or almost completion of that work, the building owner, Maria Holmes Boitzen's Restaurant, has, and I think it's fair to say, urgently requested that the building be left as is and not proceed with the restoration. Uh, I think you could say that she liked the appearance of where, the way it was and was really didn't want to go forward with the restoration. Two responses for that were the city engineer, John Schulteis, who's with us tonight, uh, said that the construction contract cannot easily be terminated. Uh, maybe uh, the expression to use is it's a train in motion and it's not easily stopped. And the mayor also made the point that this is a historic district and uh, by uh, not, not completing the restoration, it'd be like a, a missing tooth in the canopy row. At that point, there were at least two uptown business owners who requested a, 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 a very urgent meeting with the mayor to discuss the demolition of the canopy uh and an urgent meeting because in the street were scaffolding and building materials and blocking the street and so forth so time was of the essence so they wanted a meeting to discuss the demolition of the canopy from 43 45 north front street going east now that's difficult to know the directions anywhere in kingston but going east up to the former uh up to the intersection of North Front Street and Wall Street, Uncle Willie's going in that direction, thereby leaving the canopy intact going uh, in the other direction. Uh, 
So we had that we had that meeting. We had the meeting that they originally requested. At that meeting, uh, in attendance were my uh, all, Alderman Coop and Talman, the mayor John Schulteis, uh, Kevin Bryant, Sue K. Hill, Maria, and an attorney representing Maria. I don't think I've left there anything out. Anyone out? The output of that meeting was for John to obtain a quote from the contractor for a change of scope. In other words, before we go and do much further with this and, and going to all the, the property owners and so forth and really having deep discussions, what does this thing cost? What is it going to what is it going to be? So we've asked John to do that. He has done that. And I'm going to uh, uh, and uh, that, that, that is the purpose of this emergency meeting of the Special Finance Committee. So I'm going to ask John, if you would, John, if you would please come off mute there and review where we are. Give, give us a sense of what you've had con uh, a couple of contacts with the contractor. Where are we? Sure. Uh, thanks, Doug. Um, so, yeah, late last week I did meet with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Friedlander. Uh, Friedlander Construction to request the pricing for the the change that you described. Um, uh, one small correction, Doug. The the amount of the contract currently with Friedlander is uh, one hundred forty eight thousand dollars, not one hundred sixty five. Uh, one sixty five is yeah, one sixty five is the maximum uh, approved by the Common Council for the project. Okay, stand corrected. The bid the bid came in just a little lower, so. Um, so, uh, the change order pricing that was presented, uh, would take, would make the change that you described to not reconstruct at 43 and 45, but to add more demolition going east, uh, on that side to third, to number 31 North Front Street. So the pricing provided by the contractor was higher than I expected. And it's uh, $345,300, 345, 300. Um, so based, you know, uh, the, the common council could uh, consider that amount or, cons uh, or consider uh, just completing the project as it's currently uh, conceived for the 148,000. And I think there's maybe a third option that is to you're, you're right that uh, trying to stop the contractor now is, is a bit like uh, stopping a train, but we do have some breaks in our contract language that would let us direct the contractor to stop and then negotiate a price for the work already completed to date, you know, that would be something less than the full 148,000. And you know that that's a subject of a negotiation, but I think that we're somewhere near the 50% value of that 148 that's spent. So um, those are that's the information I have. That's where we are right now. So we're here for the the direction of the council. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, so if I could just summarize what John said, I'll get uh, Tony. I see your hand. Uh, and other hands going up. Uh, we're talking about an increase of to do what has been requested by some of the property owners would be almost a two hundred thousand dollar increase for a complete destruction, uh, 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 not destruction, demolition uh, going east. Okay, uh, questions, comments, Tony. Uh, Tony Davis, please. This is all me, Tony Davis, Ward 6. Uh, Doug, a few questions. John, a few questions. Uh, so it's 148000 for what he's done currently or the contractor's done currently? John, Doug? Right. 148 was the award amount to demolish and reconstruct. So for what, what properties? 43 to 45 only. 43 to 45. And that's almost completed. Well, the, the demolition is complete and they've installed some footers. And additionally, he's uh, ordered materials. So, you know, it sounds as though if we directed him to stop today, we'd owe him about half of the 148.
just to leave the to leave the site in the condition that it is right now. All righty. And now the other business owners from 43 through 31 North Front Street have all stated that they would like to have their canopy demolished. Is that correct, Doug, John? Whoever else? No, I don't think that. Else? No, like no, that. Tony, I don't think that is correct. I can answer that, Tony. I've spoken to every business owner. Um, and uh, Don, please let me finish. I recognize you next, okay? Uh, we've had some some of the property owners uh, uh, rather vociferously, but uh, but anecdotally say, "Hey, we want this. We want you to go and and, and take the rest of this down." Uh, we have not, to my knowledge, approached every one of them, and I didn't want to do that until we knew had some idea what it would cost, because it, it, it's pointless to make uh, ask all these questions when you have an idea. Oh no. no if we didn't have any idea what it's cost. So now we we know it's we have an idea what it was cost, maybe negotiable, may not. John doesn't think so. But we could go to them if it's if it's the desire of this of this committee and, and by the full council to do that. Uh Don, you want to comment? Yeah, uh, um I um just so you know, um because I, I have um um several businesses right there i know all the business owners so i have spoken to them and um, there are uh, six separate business owners that we're talking about and five out of the six of them are um, in favor of uh of the removal one said well i'm, I'm i'd like to keep don, it i can't hear you can the rest of you hear don you can't can everybody else hear me yes okay um i don't know Doug. um but one of the anyway five out of the six of the business owners are in favor of, of removal uh one was not but he said it's okay andrea what should i do regarding doug i have no idea doug can you hear me <clears throat> doug i'll take that as no. a no uh you guys continue i'll try and figure this out okay um so i spoke uh, again the business owners um majority do want it to to come down um and i was able to um uh they appreciated the uh the communication but um you know also the um you know the the quote that uh was given to us i think uh it was just so crazy i did reach out to some other contractors and um they indicated to me um uh, firmly and specifically that this could be done at a fraction of the cost i don't want to uh, share that uh any numbers but um oh. certainly the number that was i that gave was, the other thing dog to john was uh outrageous uh don can i just clarify Klaus number yep this is renny scott childress are you saying that there are six business owners or six property owners there? Property owners. Okay. I spoke. I also spoke to a to a majority of the business owners. Not all of them because they're closed, but um, the majority of the business owners would prefer that it be taken down. Uh, this is Andrea Schott. Uh, Alderman Coop is still having issues, so he's uh, and I couldn't help him, so I'm just gonna call on people. I think uh, Alderman Shabbat had a question, and then Alderman Hirsch, and then Alderman O'Reilly. So Alderman Shabbat. Steve, you have to unmute yourself. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Can everybody hear? Everybody's kind of breaking up. Um, okay. Actually, I have a couple questions about. Steve. Steve, about everything that's yourself. going on here. Steve, uh, Steve Shabbat. Thank you. Steve Shabbat. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. I guess my first question would be for John. Um, can you, without going into a, a lot of details, I'm not really quite sure uh, um, what some of the owners want and some of the others, some want demolition. Can you just ex explain briefly what's the difference going to be between somebody that wants it, wants the work done, and somebody that doesn't want 
want the work done. And that would that's my first question. My my I guess my my at least my second question would be if we start adapting, you know, every other canopy, so to say, is it going to engineer? Is it going to have an adverse effect on on the next partition if we don't or the next canopy if we don't continue the work as as originally designed? Is it going to, you know, I don't. Know, is it going to take away something? Do we know? You know, do you know what I'm saying even? Yeah. So the first question, this is John Schulteis. The first question has to do with, um, can you know, do we need unanimity or do we even need the permission of the, of the building owner to attach? Um, the answer is no. We already have that in the form of an easement uh, that was, that goes back to the 1970s that allows the pike plan to be attached to each building so the city um the city can proceed with any work that it wants to on the pike plan uh with or without the agreement of the adjacent uh landowner because that that permission has already been given in the form of that easement and then your your second question has to do with the uh uh, engineering considerations of making certain sections uh, stand alone. Um, that has not been analyzed in detail. Uh, I can tell you the the structural design of our replacement uh, is for a standalone structure so that it does not rely on the canopy to either side for support. Um, but one concern that exists at 43 and 45 is that the the existing canopies that under under some permutation might now become freestanding where they had support in the middle before that condition has not been analyzed to know how effectively those structures can become freestanding that that previously were not okay i this might be don might have a better answer for this what exactly don't they like about the plan? Um, they feel that the uh, that the uh, canopy prevents light from coming in, and it's hard for for people um, to see their stores from the road. Um, and um, they that's that's they also don't like that it's hurting their buildings, and you know that it's not kept up. Um, but uh, you know, they also not, not most people also appreciate that it is does provide cover from the rain and the snow. So it's not like they're all everybody hates it. Um, but in you know, to summarize, the majority would prefer to not have the canopy there. Uh, Doug Cooper, Chairman, uh, I think a consideration is that if notwithstanding the cost if, if we if we decided to do it we're talking about it, it, on one hand it was like a missing tooth but if we did this it'd be like you take half of that side of north front street take it take it away and on the other side of north front street it would it would still be there so to you continue with the dental analogy it'd be like taking one side of your mouth out and the other three are still there I don't think that would look very good. Um, Don, so I agree with I agree with what Doug said, and um, I put a uh, I sent a PowerPoint presentation to everybody that summarizes all the costs related to all of our um, options, and one of the options is to to you know to to replace Maria's section and then to. Um, take care of all the deferred maintenance, all the big problems that have occurred over the many years to bring it up to a, you know, a decent condition and then to maintain it every year. And as you'll see, the, num the, uh, the number for that is north of $700,000, um, whereas to remove the entire structure would be a million dollars. So I would like to suggest that this forum tonight uh, be a place where we consider the larger question of removing the entire structure so so the city can afford it because I don't believe that the city is in a position to afford to fix it 
and maintain it into the future. Uh, Don, uh, I, I think to, that that's a whole different issue. I think the purpose of tonight's meeting is to decide whether to go forward with the ch this change order. Overarching this whole discussion, of course, is the entire pipe plan. And I don't think that can be the scope of tonight's meeting. Yes, we have to do that, and we've been trying to do that for months. But the most immediate, we've got a contractor there, the scaffolding and all the material materials in the street. What are we going to do? So we can't, the, the overarching, whether to go forward, tear down the pipe plan to fix the whole thing, we're not going to do that in one night. We have, this is the issue, is to, whether to go forward with the, uh, with, with the change order. Steve Shabbat. Um, all right, Steve Shabbat. Um, she also had her hand up for like the last 10 minutes, and I don't know if Doug, uh, if you're seeing her face. Okay, or sorry, Mr. Go ahead. Thank oh, you. Hold on, we've got two other people Ms. talking, please. I recognize Steve Shabbat. Tony will be next. Yes, Steve. Oh, okay. All right, Steve Shabbat. Um, I've been on record before. I, I've never been a real big fan of the bike plan per se. Um, yeah, I like I like the old look. You know, I know I sound like an old timer. That's what I grew up with. I really like the looks of it. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, you know, with the awnings out, I, I think you, you saw the buildings a lot better. You could appreciate the buildings a lot better. That being said, we've had this project going for I don't know how many years. This has been going on several years. It seems like one of the first issues when I came on board was talking about the pike plan. But even though I'm not a big fan of it, I really can't imagine what it would look like in bits and pieces. I would say we have to it has to be all or nothing. You know, probably the for me the saving grace of the whole pike plan is that is a it's a continuous shelter from for all of uptown. Now, if we start divvying it up, so you know you're going to be sheltered in some areas and not sheltered in others, it's going to def really defeat the purpose of it. You know, but we've had this going, you know, for a number of years. You know, I'm yeah, I'm kind of surprised that that we have this much um, adversity now. Kevin Bryant has something to say. So if it's okay, um, Doug, if Kevin could jump in here. And then also Patrick O'Reilly after Michelle. Yes. Okay, uh, Andrew, I'm, I'm, I'm back now, if I could continue chairing the meeting. Yes, I know. Okay. Kevin just sent me a text though. So I was just jumping in. All right, well, Tony was next in line and then I'll come to, to, uh, to Kevin Bryant, okay? I wasn't next Tony, in line. Please. I wanted to acknowledge that Michelle Alderman Hurst has had her hand up for the longest time, and I wasn't sure if you were aware of that, that she's been having her okay, hand up. No, I was not. By, by okay, go to Michelle, please. Michelle Hurst, please. Uh, this is Michelle Alderman Hirsch. Thank you, Alderman Davis. I th think Doug wasn't hearing at the time, and uh, Alder, uh, President Shot had called on me next, but Anyway, no worries. Thank you. My question uh, about the 345 uh, to do the work on the rest of the um, piece on that street, does that include um, maintenance, restoration on the buildings? Um, we had brought this up um, at another point. We were talking about different prices, uh, if it would include maintenance. So, Annette, can, I, can I step in here? Kevin yes. Bryant. Yes, Kevin, Kevin Bryan has something yes. urgent. Just go to Kevin, please. Thank you. So what I wanted to say is I wanted to jump in earlier and uh, just kind of clarify something that John had talked about earlier. While that individual contractor may have gave a proposal relative to what he thought he would do the rest of the street for in terms of deconstructing the portico, truth of the matter is the size and scope wouldn't be properly handled through a change order. It would actually have to be put out as an RFP to have the work done, which would obviously take more time to to get in to do it the proper way. 
Mm -hmm. I'm done. Thank you. Good. Yeah, back to Michelle. I'm good. You're Thank done. you. Tony. Tony Davis. So John or Doug, whoever, maybe the answer is. So Freelander con contractor. They've only been contracted just to work on Boyston's 43, 45. That is all they've been contracted to work on. Was this that one property? 43 to 45 is right. All right. So, Doug, one follow-up question. Yes. So what are we discussing here today, Dan? I'm really, I want to make some, I want to, okay, I'm sorry, this is Alderman Tony Davis again. Uh, what is the, clar this clarify, what are we discussing here today? Well, I I thought we were discussing based upon the meeting we had a couple of days ago with the mayor and Kevin, you were, I thought we were discussing uh, whether uh, we could go forward with a change order to, to this additional scope of work. Now, Kevin, what you're saying is that's not the proper way to go. What I'm what I'm saying, Doug, if you guys choose not to put the structure up at this point, then it would stop at this point. You, so you could you could take the time to decide how you're going to handle it. Their concern was they didn't want the structure up. Now you can still not put the structure up at this point in time and figure out what how you're going to handle this moving forward but that was the concerns that they had raised um but i'm just saying you a, a change you can't do a change order and just say well with the balance of this contract and uh, we'll just add more money to it and you can take off the rest of the porticos down to uncle willie's that's not it, there has to be a competitive process because the change of work order is not what was contemplated that what what's being proposed is not what was con contemplated in the original RFP. Mm -hmm. okay. Randy, Randy uh, Scott so, Kevin, does that mean then that uh, the hundred and forty eight thousand dollars that's in the contract for the current uh, renovator uh, would that money then? have to go to uh, the renovator in full even if uh, they don't complete uh, the contract because since we're in a sense since we in a sense would be withdrawing from the contract john schultice yeah so the the contract does have uh, a set of breaks on it that the cut that the city can terminate the contract with with written notice and 10 days notice to the contractor um, at that point some amount of is you know we, we'd have to negotiate how much is complete as i said i think it's a it's it, we'd we'd be on the hook for around 50 percent more or less of the 148 thousand. that's that's only a, a guess at this point um it would obviously every day that goes by that amount decreases because the contractor is completing more and more of the work well it see uh, yes, uh, Pat, Patrick. Patrick O'Reilly. O'Reilly. Thanks, Doug. Patrick O'Reilly. Um, I got a few questions. Uh, have you guys? I, I got on late. So, did you guys talk about the fact that there was a survey sent out to the entire city of Kingston on whether they wanted to keep the canopies or not? And I believe it was overwhelming that the citizens of the city of Kingston wanted to uh, keep the the uh, canopies up. Uh, I don't know how long these business owners have been in the city of Kingston, but uh, for many of the people of the city of Kingston, uh, they truly enjoy uh, the shade uh, from the canopy. They truly enjoy uh, the fact that it uh, adds to social uh, I would have to say social gatherings, but uh, we can't do that anymore. But uh, so being social, uh, it also uh, allows people uh, places to wait out of the rain um, for to get into some businesses that have lines, maybe, and so forth. So um, the, the the people of Kingston, I think, um, have spoken and said they really would like this 
canopy to stay up. Has has that been talked about yet? I'm sorry I got on late. Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, but but Patrick, if I could say you you're getting into the issue of the of the the whole pipe plan. I think what we're discussing here is this particular localized issue, 43, 45 North Front Street, and maybe going down to 31 North Front Street. That's the meeting. Don't forget, we got a contractor there. The street is all bollocked up. We've got we've got to make a decision either either to move or not to move. And I think that's got to be the the output of this meeting. Not the whole want, pipeline. I love everything you say. Long range. It's got to get consideration, and we've been wrestling with this for the longest time, and we haven't got there. And it's frustrating to you and me and everybody else. But that, I, I just, don't think that's the focus right now. But I, I just wanted say to say that you know Don is saying there's a few business owners, five or six, that don't want this. But I believe there's thousands of cit citizens and you know residents of the city of Kingston who actually want this. I think that's a consideration. Thank you. Yeah, uh, John Schultes. Yeah, so um, I appreciate Kevin you you uh, reminding the the Common Council, I guess, about some of our procurement policies that would prohibit or issuing such a large change order. When I solicited the the pricing from the contractor, I didn't know what number he would put at would put on it. So it was uh, it was much larger than it, it expected. So really, the the immediate direction that I need is to is is you know I think the three hundred forty eight thousand dollar change order is off the table. But um, the immediate direction I need is to continue with the hundred forty eight thousand contract to completion as as planned, or to stop work. As, you know, and make it safe and and demobilize the contractor in the current condition, and negotiate a a price, you know, to some some fraction of the 148 that's due for the work already completed. Tony Davis. So again, this is Alderman Tony Davis. The 148,000 that we have a contract for, correct? That's what's on the table right now. What is that? What is the scope of that work? Is it this in front of one business or is it in, se in front of several businesses? There's there's uh, two the two addresses that it applies to. There's multiple storefronts there. There's multiple storefronts. Has have we we've already started that work? And it's yes. almost completed. The demolition is complete, and four four new footers have been installed. Alrighty, so I don't see why we would stop in the mid midway through here if they're almost ready to complete that. I would suggest that we can have the contractor complete the project that it is, and then, as we've all said, we can always come back for the the larger the, the larger discussion here of what's going to happen from that address going forward. Keep up, take down, take sections down, but to stop in mid you know, midway and say, okay, well, we're only going to pay you for, we, we had this, we had this out in the contract. We're going to only gonna pay you for half of what you did. I don't see the thing. If, if that structure there for the longest time was deteriorating and that is why we originally went to put it out there to get a contractor to build that up and fix that location. Why not complete that? And then we can always come back and discuss the rest of the pipe plan going forward. Uh, Michelle Hirsch, please. Alderman, uh, Alderwoman Hirsch here. So if the business owners that are there are requesting that the um, pipe plan not be rebuilt right in front, we would have a hole if we weren't to finish this. So would it be best, would it be possible to get an emergency RFP for the whole pipe plan and see what it would cost to pull the whole thing down? Because we can't just either leave a hole there and then have everything back up. So I think we should all, yeah, we should we look at something sooner than later. Okay, let me suggest this. Is, does anyone at this point want to make a motion to discontinue the work and rebid it out? Uh, Kevin, Kevin Bryan, please. 
Yes, I believe that the mayor had his hand up at one point. So before you guys decide on taking any action, I think you should hear what he has to say. Mayor Noble, please. Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to just reemphasize the fact that I think, you know, there's a lot of questions tonight about kind of how we got here and where we're going. But I, I do think that it's important for us to just take a moment um, and to, to listen to the property owners here. I think that the as we know, the pike plan has been, um, you know, a really um, difficult discussion over the last 40 years plus that it's been up. Um, and I do think that this is an opportunity for us, um, if we're willing to, um, to hit the pause button and to take an opportunity to also engage, um, you know, with an RFP process to learn more about what the demolition costs um, will look like. I think that you know our city engineer has and will continue to um, you know prepare for all of you a good evaluation of what ongoing maintenance costs um, will look like for the pike plan and also we have been and continue to gather information about um, other sections that are seriously deteriorating and so i do think that if we're willing to take a moment to at least gather some more information um, i think that the way our contract is written with this contractor is that we really do have an opportunity to basically pay for the work that's been done, hit the pause button, which will, you know, really um, not cause any, I think, undue harm to the current property um, if we were to just stop at this point. And it does, I think, give us at least a little bit of a window to just maybe do some due diligence. And to be honest, to be able to have a storefront open um, for people to see what the pipeline could look like. Um, at least for a little while, um, you know, which many people, in, including my entire life, um, have not seen the pike plan um, without the pike plan. And so um, I think that that could be something that, again, if we take, you know, a month to kind of do some work and come back to you next month, um, you know, that would really be, I kind of think my ask would be um, tonight. And then I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Good. Randy? Randy Scott Childress. Uh, so if we did hit the pause button tonight and uh, jumped out of uh, rebuilding the section that is uh, now uh, demolished, would we then have to get, if we decided to rebuild it the way it is now, would we have to go out and find another contractor and then potentially have to pay a lot more to get that section repaired than is currently at issue? John Schultes. I think that our, our, our contract language does contain um, the ability for us to pause the work, I think for up to 90 days, um, just going from memory. But it would it would it would incur a, uh, a cost. Uh, well, the contractor would be entitled to a change order for additional cost in that case. And you have some idea what that pause would cost us? I, I wouldn't want to estimate it. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Andrea, shut. I know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the time. Um, but also, I was just wondering if we pause this and then we have 90 days or probably a little bit less because I know this has been going on for a week that they haven't worked, the contractors. We would have 90 days and then we could all the council could then focus on the entirety of the pike plan is that correct john or kevin say the question again so if we if we pause the work right now we don't owe the contractor any extra for 90 days because of what it says in the con language of the contract so that gives us a window of time that we could then discuss the full pike plan and then that could you know is that accurate john but just to be clear as soon as we ask for a pause of of any period of time the, the contractor uh, is entitled to uh, additional compensation per the contract uh, the, when you issue a contract, the contractor has the expectation that he or she can start the work and, and work on it continuously rather than be interrupted.
Patrick. Patrick O'Reilly. Yeah, thank you, Patrick O'Reilly. Um, it, it's is Steve Noble still on? Yes, yes he is. Ask a question. Yep. Steve, uh, do you remember that survey? Because when I came on board, when I came on board, I mean, we've with this has been going on a while, and I thought we had decided that we're going to keep the pike plan up. It's not in that bad of shape, and that it can be maintained, and that and going forward, that's what we're going to do. And and now um we have i know steve you were never in favor of the pike plan I, I know you were always looking to take it down as far as i've been on the board so i know that so uh now now there seems to be an opening here i think it's a bad idea i think we should uh, uh, uh just fix this thing and uh, like tony said uh fix this thing we're halfway through and then if we want to take a look at this going forward we can um steve what was that survey uh, from the citizens uh that was given was it uh in favor of the pike plan or against uh we did we did two surveys um at the same time um one was to all of the property owners um that the 44 property owners that have easements with the city of kingston um a large majority um if not almost all at the time um you know voted in that part of the survey for the city to take it down uh, we then did a public survey um, which was on survey monkey. We had about 650 people took that survey. Um, and you're correct, a majority of those folks um, wanted us to keep it up. Um, to, as an aside, the one thing that you know we couldn't provide and didn't provide is we didn't say that it would cost X dollars to keep it up. Um, we really didn't have any numbers uh, in that survey. It was more of just a general sense of where the public was at. I do think that you know, because of all of the issues that we've had as of late, as you guys can tell just with this section in front of Boydson's, um, because of just this one section, it's, it was proposed to cost 148000 for just one. And we've identified now multiple of these types of defects. And so we, are, we do have to recognize that there is going to be a long-term cost that currently the city budgets about a couple of thousand dollars. Um, and ongoing maintenance. So we didn't include any of that in the survey, so I was just trying to keep that all in mind. Um, but yeah, in general, the public was supportive um, of keeping it um, the way it was. Okay, and Lois, I think we all should uh, keep in mind, one. as council, we should all keep in mind that the citizens of Kingston, New York, the people of Kingston, New York own that pike plan, not the owners of the building. And the people who own that pike plan want it up. So I think we need to keep that going forward, th thought, thinking about that. Thank you. Okay. You know, I just want to remind everybody, we're backing up. In fact, we've overrun. We have a laws and rules committee that is about, that was to start at six o'clock. Is, is anyone want to make a motion on where to go with this? Tony Davis. Tony Davis here. That's what I wanted to do, Doug. I want to make a motion out there that we, and uh, if the structure is sound now that we are, the contractor was hired to do at this point, I want to make a motion that we suspend and any more work with this and contract at this time, if the structure is sound, what we hired for, and that we then we can come back later for more discussion on the overall pipe plan, regardless if people want to take it down or not take it down for the time restraints that we need to go for. So I make a motion that we suspend any more work with the current contractor. If John, if the structure that we hired him for, if it's now it been improved and then we go forward, that's my motion. Second. Any just uh, uh, motion has been made by Alderman Davis, seconded by uh, Alderman Hirsch. Uh, discussion, Steve Chauvet. Steve, unmute, Steve. Steve, unmute. I'll make my comments very quick. Um, as several people have said, we've had this discussion for several years um, we've done a lot of a lot of discussion um, we have to discuss maintenance we we never come up with a with a figure but i think everybody realizes 
there will be maintenance costs associated with this. We went, we did the, we did two surveys, um, which indicated much to my dismay that everybody seemed to want this plan up uptown. Um, you know, someone already said it is our, it's our pike plan. Um, you know, and it, unless things have changed drastically since that, since the poll was completed, you know, I'm still going under the presumption that the the majority of people, both in the city and uptown, in the uptown business area, want that pike plan in there. However, that being said, I mean, I don't, I don't know. This is, it's not a safety issue. I mean, you, after all this time, let's make sure we get it right. And if that means, you know, taking a step back for a month, you know, I'm I'm good with that too. I I just want to make sure we get this right you know but the bottom line it's going to be our decision you know we're not we're never going to make everybody happy that's for sure somebody's going to be unhappy with every single decision we make um but i don't know i i'm not opposed to, to stepping back so you know if you know we have a second on the floor i mean i'll go along with that i'm ready scott childress Rennie Scott Childress here. I'll go along with it reluctantly. My concern is we're getting ready to face uh, potentially dire economic circumstances. So this idea of either tearing it down or uh, reconstructing it in some other fashion, I mean, we're talking years and years here, it seems like, before we would have the money to be able to, to do something significant here. So, you know, in the interest of getting more information, I think it's maybe okay to wait uh, uh, to, to, to pause on, on reconstructing that one little part. But my concern is that if we don't take care of it soon, then we're going to end up with this part that's just missing, and that's going to look even worse than what we've got now. So I, too, would reluctantly vote for waiting for a little while. Uh, uh, but uh, like I said, I'm, I'm concerned about it. Okay. Chairman would like to make a comment, then I'll come back to you, Michelle. Uh, I am more than reluctantly uh, uh, feeling about this. I am, I, am, I am opposed to this pause. I think we ought to get on with it. Uh, we are facing economic considerations that, that are not going to be very pleasant. Uh, let's finish up the scope that we, the contract that we have and then, and then go from there. I'm, I will vote against this pause. Uh, Michelle, please. I'm in favor of the pause so that uh, the public can take a look at the buildings without the pipe plan up and just get an idea um, so that we can gather more information and maybe um, opinions of the public may change. We're looking at um, maintenance costs every year that are, could be quite significant. Um, and in the end, we could still end up saving money because the state of New York could be looking at economic problems for upwards uh, for up to four years. So there could be a cost savings in the end. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Don Talliman, please. Don Talliman. Yes, hi, thanks. This is Don Talliman. I'm also in favor of, of the pause. Um, we, I did, in speaking to John this afternoon, assemble costs and, and share them with everybody. So please look at your uh, emails later. Um, you can see the cost for all the options that we can consider what to do going forward. And just quickly to respond to Steve and, and Patrick about, you know, the citizens voted, please, and the mayor said, please remember, if they had been asked, would you pay more taxes to keep your pipe plan, you like it, yes, but would you pay more taxes? I think we may have come out with a different answer from the public because it will be more money for the city and the taxpayers will have to pay for that. Patrick O'Reilly. Yeah, Patrick O'Reilly. Uh, isn't the grant money tied to that pike plan? And if we tear it down, we'll have to pay that grant money back. Is that true? That is true. And despite the correspondence that, that's been sent, um, trying to get a definitive answer has been very difficult. So uh, the Department of State, uh, didn't have a figure to give us, and they wouldn't make any representation as to what we'd be responsible for relative to the federal grant. 
Okay, so there's so there's other considerations too by not allowing this to happen. We may be violating some kind of a grant agreement uh, for the uh, for the pike plan. Uh, so again, I stress that we go forward, we fix this section, like Tony had said before, and we stay in compliance with our grants, and then we'll have plenty of time in the future to take a look at this. Uh, more closely. Thank you. I, I now would like to take a vote. I'd like to vote on to cut off debate and call the question. So I'd like to ask all in favor of cutting off the debate to signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye in favor. Okay, the motion carries then to. to uh, uh, cease debate and call the question. So I'll call the question. The motion is to pause, uh, have the engineer uh, negotiate a, a pause agreement with the contractor. Motion made by Alderman Davis and seconded by Alderman, uh, Alderwoman Michelle Hirsch. All in favor, please signify by raising your thumb. <laughs> That one, two, three, uh, only committee members. <laughs> all in, again, all in favor? One, two, I see two votes in fit. Three vote, one, two, three, four. All opposed? Motion carries, four to one. I think okay. that concludes the business. Okay. Just for the public, just to clarify, um, it was the opposition vote was Doug Coop. They, they can't see your thumbs. Okay. Okay, the motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. I'll see you over in laws and rules and Ten so seconds. Get out and then come back in, right, Andrea? Yes. There's a whole, there's a different meeting. So check your email. Okay.